to Rackers Forum. Today uh, we are going to speak about uh, Bill 42, uh, the bill that uh, will uh, allow the people of the region of York to choose their own chair in the next election, if it is approved. And of course with me I will have Joe Lee, a leader, the one who led the, at the region uh, the fight uh, to make that happen. Uh, uh, bill 42, of course, is a provincial uh, bill that, uh, uh, that uh, of course, uh, uh, Ballard, the MPP from Newmarket Aurora, introduced at Queen's Park. And, uh, and of course, uh, we are here to discuss the merits of Bill 42 and hope uh, that the community will see merits in discussing this topic with us uh, uh, in, a, in a future opportunities. I have the pleasure of having with me uh, Chris Ballard, uh, the MPP for uh, Newmarket Aurora, who will be speaking today about his bill, Bill 42. What is Bill 42? Bill 42 is a very simple amendment to the Municipal uh, Act in that uh, we're asking that the chair of the Region of York be directly elected by the residents of the Region of York. Why? It, I, I, could, I could be flippant and say because it's 2016. Uh, it, it's 2016 and it really is time for democracy to, uh, to come into play uh, so that uh, the people of York Region have a direct say in who leads this region. But how important is it, uh, really? Well, it's very important for, for, for a whole number of reasons, but I mean, there's the fundamental principle of, of, of democracy. The, you know, perhaps arguably the most influential, powerful politician we have in York Region, right? A, a region of uh, 1.1 million people, the fastest, uh, one of the fastest growing areas in Canada, uh, you know, a budget of uh, $3 billion, a debt that's closing in on $4 billion. Uh, the region does things every day that touches our lives, whether it be water, sewage, roads, uh, or urban planning. It's very, very, very important to our, uh, uh, and to our well-being. Um, so it's, it's, you know, in, in our minds, it's very simple that, that the residents of York Region have a say in who's going to lead that vision, who's going to develop the vision for the region in, in the years ahead. Um, it was fine that the first uh, regional councillor was appointed back in 1971. And, uh, you know, I think there were less than a quarter million people living in the region of York. And in those days, you could go see Garfield at his uh, office and have a coffee with him. You know, a, a humble homeowner could go do that. Today, the region is growing. The issues are bigger. And, uh, and people really are, 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 are wondering why they don't have a say in who leads this region. The biggest issue in the region has been and will be for many years to come, public transportation. Uh, and uh, I hardly heard the chairman talk about that. Uh, isn't that uh, an important issue that should be debated all over the region, not just on the southern part where it's more uh, important, but all over the region? Well, abs absolutely. It's, it's, it's transportation. It's, uh, it's, it's health care because the region is involved in helping to fund hospitals, for example. It's urban planning and densities and growth. Uh, in the, coming from the northern part of York Region, we've seen tremendous growth over the past uh, uh, 10 years. And uh, you know, people want to know where the chairman stands on this, where the chair of the region stands on this, because they are the most powerful person uh, at regional council. They're the only regional councillor who, uh, for, who, uh, who has a full-time job. All the other regional councillors have their community work that they have to do. This fellow is there full-time. He sets the agendas for the committees. He, uh, he uh, makes appointments to the very important committees that run council. Um, a lot of power, a lot of influence. And it, it just makes sense that, that every four years during a municipal election, the regional chair be, be held accountable for decisions they have made over the past four years and explain what their vision is for the next four years. And, and that would give an opportunity to you and I, the residents, that is, to debate uh, what's important to them. And uh, interestingly enough, the, the chairman is hardly known. Uh, people tend to know their mayor or their local and regional councillor, but when it comes to the region, uh, the chairman doesn't, doesn't seem to be known. No, and, and I know as a, as a former uh, municipal councillor in the town of Aurora, people would get their tax bill and would start calling us uh, to complain, and we'd explain to them that in Aurora, and I'm sure it's uh, similar across the region, 47% of, of the municipal tax bill is regional. Uh, people had no idea, and we would have people say, what is the region? What does the region do? 
and uh, you'd have to go through a whole education process. So part of this bill, the, one of the key reasons that, uh, that I've advanced this bill, and of course, I'm the third in the line. We've had uh, uh, Reza Moridi and Helena Jasic, both uh, MPPs have put this same bill on the table. Um, but one of the main reasons is to stimulate discussion about governance and to try and uh, get people involved in understanding what the region does and what it should be doing and how they're represented. And by the way, uh, the prior two people who introduced the bill, they both became minister. Uh, so hopefully that would be an indication for you to, uh, to follow. Uh, it's certainly... I'd rather have the bill passed. Yeah, okay, I'd let's get that bill through. And then it will deal. Okay, then we'll worry about it. <laughs> well, it is an important uh, bill for the region. I certainly want to thank you for bringing it and pushing and hopefully will become a, a bill. But what is it sitting right now? Well, we had, uh, we had two days of public hearings, and uh, we booked solid those, those two days of public hearings down at Queen's Park. We had all sorts of residents uh, down to speak about it. And where it's uh, right now, we, it's been through the committee process, it's on the agenda, and I'm just busy negotiating with government to make sure that come the fall, uh, we address it. So you have to convince uh, your uh, party, uh, the government, to put the bill for third reading. Either put the bill for third reading as a, as a private member's bill mm -hmm. or uh, include it in uh, uh, a piece of government legislation that's going forward. But I think by the fall uh, we'll have some good news and we'll know for sure. Hopefully we will uh, discuss this in the fall in a very positive way. Are the other two parties in the House, the PC and the uh, NDP, are they supporting the oh, bill? It, it passed first and second reading unanimously. And at committee, we had nothing but positive uh, uh, input from uh, the, other, uh, the other two parties. So everybody is on board with this. Well, it seems that uh, it should happen. Uh, any uh, suggestion to whoever is listening uh, or what they could do to make sure that that happens? Well, I think they can do two things. They can talk to their local MPP to let them know that uh, they support this bill. And they can talk to their local councillor, their local municipal councillor, their local mayors. We had uh, so far five, I believe, five, five or six uh, local municipalities pass uh, resolutions in favour of this bill. So the majority of York Region councils have bought into this bill and want it to happen. Um, and so it's important that you talk to your regional councillor and, and tell them that you support the bill. Thank you, Chris, for joining us. Jolie, you have seen, heard what uh, MPP Ballard had to say on this matter. Any comments? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I fully support this Bill 42, and I bought the uh, actually resolution to the council in the region uh, to de debate it. You know, and also I know that uh, in Ontario, you know, like the three party are on site, and especially when I talk to PC leader uh, Patrick Brown and his caucus are fully on site, and mm -hmm. even the NDP on site. So in the by and large, my Markham council are fully on site, and the people all city in the city of Markham, they all support me. So we're all on board, it seems to me. The only thing we have to wait for is the actual mm -hmm. uh, bill, be the third reading to go through. And, and of course, uh, what we, uh, we're going to hear what uh, Jack Heath has to say on the same topic uh, mm -hmm. at this moment. So, Jack, uh, a big issue in the region of York, as far as I know, and that is uh, electing or not electing the regional chair. Uh, there is uh, a movement uh, to make that happen in an election. Of course, one of the local MPP, Chris Ballard, uh, has introduced a bill. That's true. It's waiting for a third reading. If, it, if there is a third reading, it becomes law. What's your position on that matter? Well, as you know, we dealt with a regional council about a month ago or so. And I voted against electing the chair. There are a number of reasons. The main reason, interesting, I thought the council voted against it, is they felt they were asking us to do something in York Region when Peel doesn't elect its chair, Niagara Region doesn't elect its chair, and they were wondering why were they concentrating on York. And they said the provincial government should come back with a legislation to cover all three. Mm -hmm. Maybe we might uh, acquiesce to that. But Durham is selecting the chair. Yes, they did last, uh, last round. They elected the same chair that they had uh, when they appointed. But it was elected by the people. And so yes, it, it makes a little more uh, 
chosen by the people and not by a small number of 20 or so regional councillors of the region. Isn't that uh, an important factor? Well, I think it, democracy is important, and I do agree with you uh, that we ought to be more democratic, etc. But Canada doesn't have a great record when you come to democracy and electing its leaders. You we don't elect elections. the PM, so we don't we don't elect the premier. The party chooses the uh, uh, the leader of the party, and he or she goes out and campaigns for the party, and knowing that they're going to be prime minister or premier. Indeed, Mario. Uh, on occasion, the party elects the premier or the premier, and they become the premier or the prime minister the next day or a week or two later. Kathleen Wynne, that's how she be. She was premier for almost a year and a half before she went to the people. And, and that's our system. And it's, uh, as you said earlier, it does work. The fact that remains, though, that the people of the through their interview, everybody, to my knowledge, is in favor of the change. Uh, they believe that they want to be the one who chooses the chair. They don't want 20 people that they elect to choose the chair. And they also have a feeling that the chair, if elected, will commit himself or herself to specific issues that are important to the people, such as public transportation. This is one of the biggest issues that has been for many years and will be for many years to come. And unless we have an elected uh, chair, there's a feeling that that commitment isn't strong enough. What would you say to that? Well, I would say the cost is the most important factor in public transportation. The subway going up Young Street from Finch to Richmond Hill is a $4 billion program, uh, let alone some of the other aspects of transportation. And I would challenge you to say that York Region is not doing its best on any matter of transportation. It really is doing its best, but the cost is significant. The other thing, I think more importantly, why did I vote against the election? I very much believe in the strength of Markham or Vaughan or Richmond Hill uh, as opposed to the region. And power follows the ballot. It follows the ballot. The person would be elected on the same ballot where we elect a mayor of Vaughan or the mayor of Markham. He or she would be the next line down, regional chair, and they're the seven or eight people or whatever running. And that person would have as much right to say, I represent Markham or Vaughan as the mayor or the councillors would. And if there's a disagreement, the person says, I was elected in Vaughan as well. I was elected in Markham as well. Therefore, my view is just as important as yours, and this is what I want to do. And we all know the region is more powerful than the lower tier. We also know very few people identify with the region. They identify with their lower tier municipality, Markham or Vaughan or Richmond. But would it be better Newark. if we have the chairman that uh, the people of Markham and other municipality identify as their own? Right now, nobody identifies with the chair. Uh, they identify, as you said, with the mayor and the regional council yeah, and the yeah. local council. But how wouldn't that be better for the people if they know and they can influence their chair by their votes. Well, you got a point. That is a point, and I, 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 that's the argument for democracy. But the other side is that I'm much more a fan of Markham or Vaughan or, or Richmond Hill or Georgina or what have you. And the region has slowly but steadily been taking powers away from the lower tier. I mean, transit, you referenced transit. Transit was a lower tier responsibility until 2000. But there's also fire, where there have been discussions to take power away, waste management to take power away, also planning to take power away, a whole bunch of them. Now, I think people identify with their lower tier municipality, Vaughan and Markham, and I think the strength should be there. Therefore, I'm not sure I want to have a stronger region and a weaker lower tier so, municipality. So your reasoning is that you want a stronger municipality vis-a-vis -vis the region, yeah. and by electing the chairman by the people, you're going to give more power to the chair. That's the reason. But if Power the chair is the ballot. But if the chair is able to make uh, fire more efficient, transportation, which is already a regional matter, more efficiently by managing it regionally, would that be in the best interest of the taxpayer? Well, I'm not sure that that's been found when Toronto amalgamated. I don't think they've saved any money. Matter of fact, you want to talk to the people in the fire department in Toronto, they've got uh, all sorts of positions that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there was any saving in that area. You know, Vaughan or Markham uh, would be the largest municipality in five or six provinces. They're quite able, like Mississauga was saying, just recently they were saying, we want to stand on our own feet. Why do we have to be part of Peel? Are you suggesting that one of the reasons that you're not supporting the you know, chair elected is that maybe you want to see Markham on its own and Vaughan on its own, or, or maybe as the southern region, one group, the northern region, another group? 
Is that, no, uh, I'm quite happy the way we are. Okay. I just don't want to change the power okay. relationship anymore. And I think electing the chair does that. And I'm not sure that Mississauga, first of all, the province would have to uh, agree to that. And second of all, I think there are large benefits of having a regional government and a lower tier government in the relationship. I don't want to change it. And I think this vote, this type of approach would change it. Okay, well, fair. You have a good uh, argument why you don't want to support an elected regional chair. I thank you for your comments. Of course, we're going to hear from a few other people. And then uh, one of the states, maybe the people, will have to make that decision. Thank you, Jack, for expressing yourself. Thank and you, Mario. until next opportunity to chat again. And we have heard, uh, of course, MPP Ballard's uh, position in favor of having an election, and we have heard uh, Jack Heath from Markham say no. But I have uh, Jolie here uh, from Markham, uh, who sits at the region. Who, who, what is your position, Jolie? Well, I am supporting uh, the most Bill 42, uh, plain and simple, because, you know, 2014, when I ran for re-election, uh, that's what people are asking me. How come the regional chair was not elected? So the yeah. people from Markham have been talking about it. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So they express an opinion, you know, like that. So I promise them uh, when I get re-elected, I will introduce a motion to the region to, uh, to make sure it's going to happen uh, prior to the 2018 election. What did you do in Markham? Did, did the people in Markham or the council of Markham express itself on this topic? Well, uh, because, you know, the people told me and then I consulted with my colleague mm -hmm. and most of my colleagues agree with me. That's why we'll <laughs> we brought a motion into the Markham council and it was passed by the majority of vote, okay. you know, like, uh, which I thank my colleague supporting me. Okay. So, in fact, Markham did put the motion, the motion carried to support an elected chair. Yes. And so wouldn't that be normal? that the regional council and the mayor of Markham must abide by the direction of the local administration, the, lo the local council of Markham. But there's Wouldn't no that be normal? <laughs> well, there's no law that says they have to abide by, you know, like, I mean, generally, you know, like, I mean, that was the wish of the Markham council, right? You know, like, I thought that, you know, like, uh, that, you know, like, whoever go to the region should be followed the Markham council. But again, uh, because it's not in the law, so they can do whatever they want. Well, and that's interesting. I, I, I can tell you that there has been discussion on a number of topics where mm -hmm. such a, an issue uh, was raised, and, and that is that if the local administration, the local council says A, shouldn't whoever speaks on behalf of the municipality in question say A, uh, or, or, you know, whenever the, uh, the board will take place in a different forum, in a different uh, administration, you know, the region in this case, and the answer has always been uh, yes. If the local uh, uh, council votes one way, you expect that uh, the council must respect the wishes of the majority. You may say I disagree with that position, but nonetheless, that is the position of the council I represent, and therefore, mm -hmm. I support the council position. Well, my other colleagues don't feel the same way. <laughs> because they think they go to the region, they have their own position, mm -hmm. they say they spoke against it at the council, so they have the right to do it again in the regional council. <laughs> I see. Well, uh, but, uh, but it's not just uh, Markham that took uh, a vote. Uh, I believe uh, Ballard made reference to it. There was other municipalities. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, that followed with Stowell, you know, Aurora, Newmarket, right. you know, like East Guillenby. You know, almost and Markham. So yeah. s s five, uh, five, five or six. Yeah, uh, at least five at, uh, that I remember out of the uh, out of the s nine. nine. So Which is the majority again? That's the right. ma yeah. Majority of municipality within the region of York voted for an elected uh, chair. That's right. And yet, the council of the region of York voted against that. Well, that's true. You know, like for example, Aurora. Uh, mayor, new market mayor, mm -hmm. and they voted against. Yet despite the of the council, <laughs> massive majority voted in favor. In favor of it. <laughs> and from Markham at the region, who voted uh, in favor? I know you did. Anybody else who voted in favor? Well, we have at least nine out of thirteen members that voted in favor. Mm -hmm. That's a clear majority, okay. over two third majority. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 from Markham, you have uh, one mayor and uh, three or four regional councillor from Markham sitting at the region, right? Mm -hmm. Of those people, who voted in favor, who voted against it? Well, uh, 
two of the regional council members, uh, me and the mother, actually Jim John Chu, three of us, three of you. Uh, my mayor and Deputy Mayor Jackie. Uh, More than again. So was it three, uh, three in favor three. and two against it? Yes. Wonderful. Well, uh, we know that the bill has already re uh, p completed the second reading. Uh, the only thing missing is the third reading. Mm -hmm. That is taking place at Queen's Park, not at the region. Um, uh, we hear uh, that uh, this item, Bill 42, will be on the agenda in the fall, fall 2016. Mm -hmm. We also know that it has to be approved by 2017, otherwise it won't be, uh, 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 will not take uh, place until after the next election. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there is uh, a necessity to make that happen. What would you tell the people who are watching us, what do you think they should do to make sure that uh, the wish of the community will be respected by the province? Well, I think, you know, if the people have a chance to look at the uh, program that you just airing uh, probably next week or week after, you know, they would have an opportunity to see why we're debating for, uh, uh, I mean, the reason behind why we were elected. So hopefully, they will be curious, and also the momo momentum, I should say, the new movement uh, will wake up and say, hey, this is what we want, this is what the people want. I mean, you look at the whole world, you know, they're all fighting for democracy, okay? So, you know, like for, for us, as Deputy Mayor Jack is saying, we're not very good at democracy. So that's why I always puzzle. Canada spent billions of dollars trying to lecture other country why we should go to That's democratic. That's a good question. Yeah. No, it's an interesting <laughs> question that I raised a number of times. I believe in, the, in providing leadership, quite frankly, and so if, in fact, uh, uh, other uh, people don't do it, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it. Uh, and so uh, if, the, if the leadership is required, well, let's provide it. That's true, you know. And, uh, and so... Anything that you would like to say to the viewer, what should they do? Should they call their MPP? Should they call the government? Should they call the Well, uh, I think, you know, if the people feel this is the right thing to do, they should call the, the own municipality, regional council, the mayor, and convey the desire, you know, like uh, maybe to change the position or maybe also to lobby uh, the respective MPP mm -hmm. uh, in our own municipality, you know, to tell them, make sure when the bill come forward in the fall, you should step forward and support the bill and make sure it passed mm -hmm. so, so that we can make it into law and the election will happen 2018. Yeah, the sooner uh, the bill is passed, quite frankly, the better it is so that more people who are listening to us or who will become aware, they will be thinking about running and mm -hmm. getting ready. I mean, it's always nice when everybody knows much in advance what mm -hmm. may happen so that they can uh, get ready as they please. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing, quite frankly, is in addition to calling your MPP, uh, you know, uh, those uh, councils such as Vaughan, for instance, mm -hmm. who didn't take a vote on the matter, maybe if there is enough pressure, they may change their mind. Mm -hmm. Having said that, quite frankly, uh, there is still opportunity for you, the people, to uh, make a difference by communicating whatever you believe to the local council, if they didn't vote in favor, or to your local MPP. Give some consideration. You can make a difference. I want to say thank you to uh, Bill uh, Ballard for introducing Bill 42. Of course, you, Joe Lee, for being here, and Jack Itt, who expressed himself. I thank you, and we will see all of you at the next uh, appointment we will have. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.